Oh no, I didn't catch any tilapis today, but eels. Where did my tilapis go? Do you have any idea guys? I guess these eels have something to do with this. Let's find out. Hello, magandang buhay! How are you today? Good? Alright! Welcome to another episode of Looks of Creatives. I am Teacher Benj and I will be your virtual guide for today's video lesson. This episode is intended for the senior high school grade 11 students of Earth and Life Science. Our goal of the day is to categorize the different biotic potential and environmental resistance Examples, diseases, availability of food, and predators that affect population explosion. Are you ready? Shall we start? Alright, kindly get a pen and your week 8 learning activity sheet for Earth and Life Science. Let's begin. In the previous week, you have learned about evolution specifically on how population of organisms change over time, showing modified destined patterns from common ancestors which led to the existence of organismal diversity. But the population explosion of these organisms may be affected by biotic and environmental factors, like what happened to my tilapias in the pond. Was it because of the eels only? Or there might be another factor? Hmm. But before we start, let's have first a quick review on our topic of the day, based on your junior high school science learnings. I will only give you 5 seconds to choose the best answer. You need to match the photo and a term to its definition. Let's start. Number 1. Biosphere A. A group of interacting plants and animals forming an identifiable group B. The entire part of the earth where organisms are found? C. The place where an organism naturally lives or grow? Go! Time's up! The answer is letter B. Biosphere is the entire part of the earth where organisms are found. Number 2. Habitat A. A group of interacting plants and animals forming an identifiable group. B. The entire part of the earth where organisms are found. C. The place where an organism naturally lives or grow. Time starts now. You're right. The answer is letter C. Habitat is the place where an organism naturally lives or grow. Number 3. Community A. A group of interacting plants and animals forming an identifiable group B. The entire part of the earth where organisms are found C. The place where an organism naturally lives or grow You only have 5 seconds If your answer is letter A a group of interacting plants and animals forming an identifiable group, you are correct. I bet you get a good score over there. Good job! Let's dig deeper. The rate of population growth is dependent on biotic potential and environmental resistance. Biotic potential measures how well a species has adapted to survive. Example by defense mechanism like how this rose shrub is thorny to protect itself from potential eater or herbivores. Resistance to adverse conditions. For example, frogs adjust their body temperature towards their surroundings. Migration, like this flock of migratory birds. And seed dispersion. A good example is how the seeds of dandelions are dispersed into the air by the wind. 
Biotic potential is also the ability of a population of a particular species to propagate under ideal environmental conditions, which includes sufficient food supply, no diseases, and of course, no predators. In general, smaller and simpler organisms have higher biotic potential, which means that they can easily thrive and has a fast population growth compared to larger organisms. For example, the very common houseflies. A female housefly can lay over 100 eggs at a time. Once the eggs hatched, these baby houseflies will be matured and can reproduce after a month. After seven generations, just from one female housefly, there will be 15 billion flies. Imagine that! Environmental resistance includes factors that limit population growth. Number one is biotic. Examples are food, diseases, predation, and availability of mates. Number two is a biotic factor. Examples are water, space, natural disasters, and sunlight. The combination of these biotic and abiotic factors determines the carrying capacity of an ecosystem. Carrying capacity is defined as the optimal maximum density of a population that can be supported by an ecosystem through resources such as food or energy. If the population approaches or exceeds the carrying capacity, Competition for resources will set limits to the population density. But if everything is in favorable and ideal condition to the population, it will result to a population explosion, which occurs for an extended period of time. Every individual in a certain population is distributed in a unique spacing pattern, which includes clumped, uniform, and random. Clump type dispersion shows individuals aggregate in patches or in groups. This is maybe influenced by the availability of food and behavior such as hunting or by simply guarding the young. A good example of clump dispersion are sea stars. These animals group together where food is abundant. In uniform type dispersion, individuals are evenly distributed. This is maybe influenced by social interactions such as territoriality. Nesting king penguins often exhibit uniform spacing pattern, maintained by aggressiveness interactions between their neighbors. If the placement of an individual organism in its population shows independence to other members, this is categorized as a random dispersion. Examples for these are dandelions. They grow through wind dispersion of the seeds that lands at a random place and later germinate. Population size is defined as the number of individuals in a population. For example, Luxon National High School is a 2-hectare campus with a population of 2,000 students. Meanwhile, population density is the average number of individuals in a population per unit of area or volume. Therefore, the population density of Luxon National High School is 1,000 students per hectare. Population growth is due to a higher birth rate than death rate. New individuals are recruited into the population through growth and immigration. The maturation of newborn into the adult breeding population is considered as a more important basis of the potential population growth. Population growth are not only affected by the availability of resources, but also the presence of predators, parasites, and competitions with other species. These mortality factors are classified into three. First, density-dependent is a mortality factor whose influence varies with the density of the population. It may reduce population densities and stabilize them at equilibrium levels, such as parasitism, like ticks that sucks the dog's blood. Predation, like how this lion catches its prey as a meal. 
and competition like how plants grow even taller than others to receive more sunlight for photosynthesis. More individuals of the population are killed when densities are high and less when densities are low. Predators kill relatively few of prey species that is rare. They kill relatively more of the common species. In general, high population densities individuals compete more for resources, are more easily located by predators and parasites, and are more vulnerable to infection and diseases. And density-dependent factors are biotic factors such as food supply, diseases, parasite infestation, competition, and predation. The second type of mortality factor is a density independent, whose influence is not affected by changes in the population size or density. And lastly is the physical factors such as storms, drought, fires, floods, and other natural disasters. There are also factors that affect population density. Number one is the number of reproductive events, which includes similarity and heteroparity. Similarity means organisms can produce all their offspring in one reproductive event. This is common in insects and some invertebrates, salmon, bamboo grass, and agave plant. They produce only once and die. Agaves live several years before reproducing. Some are annual plants that develop from seed, flower, and drop their own seed within a year. Heteroparity means that there is a pattern of repeated reproduction at intervals. This is common in most vertebrates and perennial plants such as trees. The number of reproductive events and number of offspring per event vary among species. For example, a pregnant woman, which is a normal pregnancy, carries the baby in her womb for 9 months, and in the ninth month, she will give birth to this baby. Organisms that live in a stable environment tend to make few expensive offspring, which means strong and healthy offspring. But organisms that live in unstable environments tend to make many cheap offspring which means weak and unhealthy. Our strategists are animals live in unstable environments and the ability to reproduce rapidly is very important. Such organisms have high fecundity which means the ability of an organism to produce offspring frequently and in large number. Give relatively little parental care in any of the offspring which makes the offspring vulnerable to predation and danger from their environment. Organisms that are R selected have short lifespan, are generally small, quick to mature, and waste a lot of energy. K strategists are larger in size and have a longer life expectancies. They are stronger or are better protected and are generally more energy efficient. They produce during their lifespans, fewer progeny but place a greater investment in each. The resulting offspring have higher chances of survival. Their reproductive strategy is to grow slowly live close to the carrying capacity of their habitat and produce a few progenies, each with a high probability of survival. Life history tables or life tables are a method of quantifying population structure that addresses all of the above population traits. Life tables provide age-specific information on survival and fecundity rates for a particular population. Information contained in a live table are Population age structure, which is the number of individuals that are young, old, and of reproductive age. Population growth rate will determine whether the population size is growing or shrinking. 
population survivorship patterns will determine what specific life stage of the species does most mortality occur, at a very young age, very old age, or equally across all ages. A survivorship curve is a graph showing the number of proportions of individuals surviving to each age for a given species or group, for example, males or females. Survivorship curves can be constructed for a given cohort, which means the group of individuals or roughly at the same age, which is also based on a live table. To summarize our discussion of the day, just remember that the rate of population growth is dependent on biotic potential and environmental resistance. The carrying capacity is the maximum density of a population that their ecosystem can support. Dispersal is the pattern of spacing among individuals in the population. Population size is equal to the number of individuals in a specific population. Population density is the average number of population size over unit of area or volume. Populations are also affected by the mortality factors. And lastly, population density is also affected by the number of reproductive events of the species. Hooray! Congratulations! You made it this far! And to assess your learnings today, can you get a pen and your week 8 learning activity sheet for Earth and Life Science and turn your last to page 8. You need to categorize whether the statement describes or is an example of biotic potential or environmental resistance. Write your answer in the space provided. I will give you only 5 seconds to do per item. Let's start! Number 1 because of sufficient nectars from a hectar flower field, these bees thrive in the area. A. Biotic potential or B. Environmental resistance. Go! Time's up! The answer is letter A. Biotic potential. When there is a sufficient food supply for the organisms, they will surely thrive in the area. Number 2. A natural forest fire have killed the wild animals living there. Is it A. Biotic potential or B. Environmental resistance? 5 seconds. Correct! The answer is letter B. Environmental resistance. Natural forest fire caused by lightning or simply by the heat of the sun is an example of an environmental resistance. Number 3. The coconut trees are attacked by pests. Is it A. An example of biotic potential or B. Environmental resistance? Time starts now. You're right! The answer is letter B. Environmental resistance. Pest attacks become parasites of the trees and consume all the leaves of the coconut trees until it dies. Number 4. In order to survive and get away from the predators, chameleons have learned to camouflage. Is it A. Biotic potential or B. Environmental resistance? You only have 5 seconds. If your answer is letter A, biotic potential, you are definitely correct. Organisms who learn to adapt to their environment, such as using camouflage and mimicry, will likely to survive. Last number, this tree snake naturally hunts small birds. Is it A, biotic potential or B, environmental resistance? Wow! You're right! The answer is letter B, environmental resistance. This is an example of predation, and predation is a natural survival activity.
Sad to say, I have found out that given a very limited space or home for my tilapias, they have reproduced exponentially, competed for food, and of course, hunted by these mud eels. I learned something today. Have you learned something today? I'm sure you have. I am confident now that you can answer the task 2 and the evaluation part on your own, which are found in pages 8 and 9 in your week 8 learning activity sheet for Earth and Life Science. You can do it! And write your learnings on the reflection part so I can read your thoughts and ideas for today's video lesson. This only proves that learning science is very informative and also fun. So I say don't stop learning and explore the world because everything around us is science. And do not forget to submit your learning activity sheets at Luxo National High School Senior High School Campus that's every Monday from 8 a.m. to 5 in the afternoon. If you have questions, please contact me. My mobile number is indicated in your individual home learning plan. Once again, I am Teacher Benj, your virtual guide for today's lesson. Tuloy ang edukasyon, sulong edukalidad, jumpman senior high. See you next time in another educational episode of Luxa Creatives. Have fun and enjoy the rest of your day.